and welcome everyone here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for our last installment of our Rising Tides Complete set review. We are on the back half of Bilgewater now, our brand new region. We're going to be talking about all of the cards that cost four plus mana, which I guess the most expensive is nine. So all the cards that cost four to nine mana. Um, so far, we've, we've had uh, three other videos, if y'all missed any of those. Rossi, thanks for that Twitch Prime sub. Rossi bringing the hype, thank you so much. Our second sub of the day, let's undo moving that thing. But as you can see, you can see like the orders up in the top left hand corner there. Um, we had Freljord, Noxus, and Shadow Isles together in our first video, then Piltover and Zahn, Ionia, and Demacia. And then our first section of Bilgewater, and now here's our second. So like all the other videos, we'll go through the champions first. There's three champ three more Bilgewater champions that cost four plus mana. Um, <laughs> we have uh, Twisted Fate is our first one. This is a card I really like. All right, so this is a four mana, two, two with quick attack. Whenever you play it, you get to play a destiny card. Uh, we'll talk about that here. And whenever it levels up whenever you've... Whenever I've seen you draw eight plus cards. So Twisted Fate has to be on the battlefield and then you draw eight cards. You know, it can just be over a uh, multiple amount of turns. And then Twisted Fate will level up. So how realistic is it for your two, two to stay on the battlefield while you draw eight cards? Basically completely unrealistic, right? So the level up honestly doesn't matter because that's, that's just not gonna happen. But I guess we should know what the level up is anyway. Oh no, I'm, I'm clicking the wrong thing. We'll, we'll get to these cards in a little bit. So the level up, it, you know, turns Twisted Fate into a 3-3. Three, three, and then the first three times I see you play a card each round, you get to play Destiny cards. So basically you can start playing a lot more Destiny cards if you ever level up Twisted Fate. But we're never going to level up Twisted Fate, so we don't have to worry about it. So basically... That level up is just no text at all. This is always going to die. So it's a 4 mana 2-2 two, two, uh, quick attack that whenever you play it, you play a destiny card. So what are these destiny cards? So there's three of them. There's blue, um, which is just refill one spell mana, draw one. So I don't know why this doesn't say attune one, draw one. I wish it did. But, um, or attune, uh, draw one. Uh, Alright, but anyway, so... You know, so we can draw one, refill one, uh, spell mana. Our gold card is deal two and stun the strongest enemy. So if they have like one one big enemy that we are scared of, uh, we get to stun it and then also uh, deal two. And then the last one, deal one to all enemies and the enemy nexus. So if they're going wide, we want to do one damage to everything. We want to trigger plunder. Um, you know, we have the red card which is really nice. So all three of these abilities are, are very good. You know, draw a card, refill one spell mana, uh, stun and deal two to something, or deal one to, to all their stuff. Like these are all very good abilities, all, all of these skills. And so the the reason why Twisted Fate's gonna be pretty good is just that versatility. You get to choose whatever the scenario looks like, this is a good card. Let's say you're playing against Control that's like killing all of your stuff. Well, you got a four mana two two that refilled one of your spell mana and drew you a card. That's not bad, you know, like that's just one extra mana for shadow assassin, like from like a shadow assassin, but you also refill a spell mana. And then of course you also have, unlike shadow assassin that you get to just ignore as like the control player for a while, this thing of course you have to kill. Like, like everybody's gonna be killing Twisted Fate. So this is also a, a complete magnet for removal. Also, yeah, you get to choose. Um, and so that's why that makes this card good. Um, because you get to choose. Um, you know, like, is so maybe you're not playing against control. Maybe your opponent's going wide. They're playing, you're, they're playing aggro. Well, you get that red card out there. Um, you know, do one damage to a bunch of their stuff. Make it a lot, you know, kill some units. Maybe make it easier to kill other units. You know, or you can do the gold card. Like, so just this versatility of having the, the play trigger of uh, being able to choose what you want to do is really nice. And then, of course, your Twisted Fate will, um, you know, it, it is aptly named. It will face a Twisted Fate because, you know, your opponent will be killing the 
the Twisted Fate before you draw uh, eight cards while it's out there, but at least it, it does its job. So I, I really like it. I think it's a it's a good champion. This is the kind of card that if it wasn't a champion, I could see putting in a lot of different decks, but because it is a champion, you know how you old, you have that cap of only being able to play six champions. So um, that makes it kind of more difficult to play because a lot of other champions can have a larger impact throughout a long game. This is kind of like a one-time thing. This is just a good value creature um, that you kind of wish you could put in more, you know, in more decks, like instead of taking one of your champion slots. Um, yeah, so I guess that, and then, you know, finally, like if you ever do level this up, um, you don't get to choose with, when it's leveled up, I'm pretty sure whenever it's leveled up, you don't choose which destiny card you play. It just plays them and it always plays them in like the same order. Like it plays like blue, then blue, then gold, then red or, or blue, then red, then gold, something like that. Um, okay. So it's blue, red, yellow. Or so blue, red, gold. Okay. Yeah. So it, so the first spell you play is gets blue. The second one, red, second, the third one, gold. So when, once it's leveled up, but again, that's never going to happen. So it doesn't really matter. Um, unfortunately, the uh, Twisted Fates um, spell card is pick a card, which as we talked about at the last one, I really don't like this pick a card. I don't think this is a very good card. Um, so unfortunately, this is the, the, the spell card. But with that being said, if you do have a Twisted Fate in play, and so therefore you have Twisted Fate spell card in your hand, then at that part, maybe the draw three helps you level up your Twisted Fate, but that's still, it's just never gonna happen. <laughs> but between all the removal, between like vulnerable being a thing now, like where they can, you know, use even like the, the creature decks can have vulnerable and challenger, like, how are we supposed to have this thing survive through Challenger, Vulnerable, all the removal? It's just never going to happen. Um, but yeah, that's the Twisted Fates um, champion card. Okay. Let's see our other champions. There's two more. There's Gangplank. Five mana, five, five, Overwhelm. Good body. You know, like we're looking at uh, Garen, right? Like five mana, five, five. This does have Overwhelm. That's pretty nice because a lot of times these larger five and six drops are going to be blocked by a smaller um, ally. Um, so that's so that's nice. Um, uh, and then whenever I'm summoned, you also summon a Powder Keg. So we've seen the Powder Kegs. You know, like those zero mana, zero ones, they are um, immobile and vulnerable. But, you know, so we've seen the powder keg. So, all right. So, Gangplank brings a powder keg. Now, the level up, and but the thing is, is that's it. Like, there's no other abilities with the Gangplank. Like, it doesn't do anything else. It just has, it's just a five mana, five, five overwhelm and a powder keg. That's it. It levels up when you've damaged the enemy Nexus in five rounds this game. So the exact same level up as Sawani, even though it's worded different. It's the same the same thing. So you have to damage the enemy Nexus five different rounds. And then you have a 6-6 six, six Overwhelm that is not only whenever it's summoned, but then also at the round start, you get a Powder Keg. So every round. Um, you know, like this card is... It's very good for regular cards, but as far as champions go, it's it's a little underwhelming. Uh, you know, like it, you wish it had had a little bit more. Um, the overwhelm's nice. The overwhelm's nice. Without overwhelm, this card would be you know very difficult to play. You have to really make good use of these powder kegs, of course. Um, if if you're playing gangplank and you're not doing anything with the powder kegs, we're probably not having very good of a champion. Level up's definitely better. Like round every round start, summon a powder keg. Those things can really add up. Like you play gangplank, you got one. Um, like at, at like their end step, uh, untap round start, you got a second one. Um, now, now maybe you have like a misfortune that can attack and does three damage to everything, and all that kind of stuff. Oh, oh wait, I just I just completely missed this attack trigger. 
<laughs> by the way. Okay, never mind. Whenever Gangplank's um, leveled up also. Uh, I don't know how I just missed that. <laughs> um, attack, it does one to all enemies and the enemy nexus. So you get you get a Nivea trigger um, whenever Gangplank attacks that's leveled up. So yeah, you definitely need um, leveled up Gangplank because now we're talking. Five mana, six, six. That's that's above the curve with overwhelm. That's really nice. Rounds, you know, summon and round start. Create those powder kegs and then attack. And now you're starting to do a lot of damage to all enemies and the enemy nexus. That that is really nice. Leveled up gangplank is super strong, actually. Yeah, that's actually just really strong. Um, it's you know how how much are we going to be able to level up gangplank? So you you had to have already damaged the enemy nexus five different rounds. It's not going to be the easiest, but there's ways to turn that on. Uh, not really on turn five. It's going to be difficult. Um, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk. We haven't talked about the Allegiance card yet. Yeah, it's a four mana card. We haven't talked about it yet. Um, so I'm like, I'm liking Gang, Gang Plank. You know, similar in nature to Garen power wise, like leveled up Garen is ridiculously good too. Um, harder to level up than Garen, probably. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it's easier to level up than Garen. Actually, probably easier to level up than Garen. Garen has Regenerate, which is awesome. This has Overwhelm. Um, which is also pretty awesome. You know, in a different sense. But. Alright. I'm, I'm kind of turning around on this card with this attack trigger. Yeah, yeah. Gangplank has to be the one attacking. It's just like a Nivea. It's not like Misfortune that just sees like any anyone else attack. All right, and then uh, the um, champion spell is the Parlay. I do like this Parlay. So it's slow speed, deal one to anything. If this kills it, deal one to the enemy nexus. So, you know, we talked about Parlay earlier. Um, it's a pretty good spell, especially for just one mana. I, I like this card. And... This is a pretty decent champion spell um, that can help uh, Gangplank level up also. Um, so I like it. All right, I'm, I'm in there. It's a pretty decent top end of an aggro deck. Um, five mana champion. Yeah, this plus um, Misfortune will be Misfortunate for your opponent. And our last champion, Nautilus. Nautilus looks sweet. Gotta get this card art in here. I need to get full art. I need this full art Nautilus as like my background for my computer here. Nautilus. All right, seven mana, zero, 12. That's, that's a lot of toughness. But it's not quite good enough, so we're making it tough. So now, so Nautilus is tough. Also, Fearsome. What? Fearsome? Oh well. <laughs> it's like, what What are we doing with this Fearsome? With, we're attacking with z for, for zero? With Fearsome? Is this the most useless keyword on any card in any game? <laughs> That, oh, wow, that is useless. But anyway, um, when I level up, copy tossed allies that cost four plus into your deck. And you level up when you are deep. All right, so remember, deep means that uh, um, <laughs> he's the bubble bear champ. Or deep means that you have 15 or less cards in your library. So uh, if you're, or your deck, if your deck has 15 or less cards, then Nautilus levels up, and then and now we're talking. Pre-leveled up Nautilus honestly doesn't really do anything. This card doesn't do anything. But when we're leveled up, if we get 15 or less cards in our deck, then um, then of course you start by uh, all any tossed ally that cost four plus. Sh reshuffle those back into the deck. So that's basically all your sea monsters. Reshuffle your sea monsters into your deck. And we have a 13-13. Now the Fearsome matters. 
I kind of feel like Nautilus should have Overwhelm, not Fearsome. I feel like it should be Overwhelm, but maybe that'd be maybe that was too strong at Overwhelm. Maybe it was ending games too fast, and then like the sea monster allies cost four less just doesn't matter if it has Overwhelm because you were just ending the game too fast with Nautilus. It seems this card seems like it should have Overwhelm though, because this is huge. But still tough. Um, I like that. I like that it's tough. Like I just think that that's pretty good flavor. Um could have like fearsome and overwhelm but yeah i guess maybe that was just too good um oh man yeah culling strike on the nautilus that's gonna be sad uh but yeah then all of your sea monster allies cost four less we already talked about that other card that cost three mana that made your sea monster allies cost one less let's say you've cast like two of those and you have a leveled up nautilus now all your sea monster allies cost six less you're basically playing them all for free and then the champion spell is a Riptide. It's a new one. Four mana, fast, stun an enemy, shuffle that enemy into the enemy deck if you have a Nautilus. That is awesome. Yeah, so we're, we're paying one extra for Steel Tempest, but you get to stun any enemy at any time, not like Steel Tempest. You know, Steel Tempest is only stun attacking enemies. So if you attack with something else, they block, they play a trick, you can still stun it, you know, how you can't do fast, uh, you can't do Steel Tempest at that point. So just one extra mana to have a much more versatile stun, but then also if you have a Nautilus, it just shuffles that enemy into their deck. That is great. That's just removal. Um, yeah, the signature card is insane if you drop a Nautilus. Yeah, it's, that is pretty awesome. All right, so those are the champions for us to think about as we go through the other cards. Nautilus is sweet. All right, we got Brash Gambler. Four mana, two, five. To play me, discard two. So you have to, like, so you have to have the Brash Gambler in play and then at two cards that you want to discard... Um, in there maybe this you know you know then of course it has the attack trigger whenever you attack you draw to fleeting so assuming you kind of tap out to play the brash gambler that first attack doesn't matter because you just got rid of two cards from your deck because those were fleeting and you don't have any mana left um uh yeah, so you need to have cards to discard, because to play me, you have to discard two. Um, you know, maybe maybe with Piltover and Zon and with Jinx, you know, you can have your discard theme, have a bunch of things that reward you for being discarded in PNZ, and uh, then it helps you empty your hand to level up Jinx. I don't know, maybe. But I'm not seeing it. You know, we got Bull Elnuk with the body, four mana, four, five. So it's a Bull Elnuk, which is, you know, not, not bad. Pretty good size. But that is a pretty brash gambler. You are gambling with this card, that's for sure. Oh, you want to go Jinx with... Um, Dude, I will never get TF. I will never, I will never get it. I just, I just won't get it, will I? If somebody writes TF, I cannot, I don't know the name of this champion. Like, what is the name of this champion? I can't, I cannot ever think of it if you just write the, the letters TF. Twisted Fate. Why can I ever think of that? I'll, I'll just never be able to think of that, I guess. Um, yeah, that's weird. Just, <laughs> the letters T, I just think of the word fortune. I guess because, like, Miss Fortune was, like, the, the first champion um, that I was introduced to with this region. Like, yesterday, we had, you know, Yud was talking about Miss Fortune being their favorite champion. Yeah, and so it's just a, a mental block. You write TF, I just think of the word fortune. And I can't, and, and you know, like, 
if you think if you look at like the card twisted fate it kind of looks like uh you know fortune kind of makes sense for like a gambling thing so it kind of it kind of fits and i just can't think of twisted fate <laughs> yeah and so then i think of the word like so i'm like t is like the so like the fortune and i'm like no that's not it but I don't know. That's a that's a mental hurdle I, I have to overcome. Anyway, let's move on. Chum the waters. Um, four mana. Uh, this was the spell that Fizz makes. We kind of talked about this before. Um, I like this card. Like four mana, grant an en an enemy vulnerable. That's you know, grant the enemy vulnerable for good. Um, that's that's pretty powerful. And then you get your long tooth. So. You, you can basi basically think of this as like a 4-mana 5-1 that whenever it enters the battlefield, you grant any enemy vulnerable. And it also has Overwhelm. This is a good card. Because um, it's also, it's even better than that because it's sp it's a spell, so you can use spell mana to cast this. This is just a pretty decent card. Um, and I think it can kind of fit a lot of places. Granting enemies vulnerable is really nice. So I like this card. But it's really great when you get to make it for free off of fizz island navigator four mana two four scout when i'm summoned create a random one cost unit from any faction and grant it scout so you know we'll see how how good this the scout stuff is it does seem like scout works really really well with misfortune how you want the extra attack steps to help trigger misfortune um and of course um the new demacia champion quinn of course, uh, with Quinn, you want the extra attack steps with Quinn as well. Um, so not only, like, you get two bodies here. Uh, you know, it's basically a 3-5 for two bodies. You're probably getting a 1-1 one, one whenever you're creating a random one-cost unit. Like, you're probably creating a 1-1. One, one. There's some decent ones that you, could, that you can hit. Um, you know, any one-cost unit from any faction. Um, I, <laughs> I don't think you can get... I don't think you can get champions. I think this means non-champions. I believe. You know, it's not it's not worded well, but I, I don't think you could hit Teemo or Fizz. Um, I know that is the dream, getting a, a Teemo scout. That's the absolute dream. It does say units, I know. I understand it's not... How it's worded, you should be able to hit a Teemo, but I, I believe how it will play is you don't get the champions. I believe. So I, I don't think it's worded correctly. But then again, maybe they just kind of say, if you want to play Island Navigator and you want to try to high roll and hit a Teemo, go ahead. Maybe. Yeah. We'll have to, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to just put the, the, yeah, we're going to just start playing the, playing, uh, that card and just see what happens. See if we can hit Teemo. All right. Mystifying Magician. Four mana, two, two with a play trigger, transform an ally into a random five cost follower from any faction. So this is pretty interesting. You can kind of think of this like ethereal remitter where ethereal remitter can kill like your undying and then you get a random five cost follower which if you've seen me doing that um over the past couple of weeks you've noticed that i have hit uh troop of elnux four of my last five times i've done that it's been exactly troop of elnux so i feel like all i'm going to be doing is just transforming allies into troop of elnux and that's not great um but you know what to kind of see like like that, that can be really powerful, you know, taking like your one mana card and turning one drops or turning like extra tokens, you know, like you vile feast, you get like the spider token. And you're like, what am I doing with the spider token? You can turn it into a five cost follower. Um, you know, turning something that's already done a lot of in, in combat and maybe only has like one toughness left, even if it was bigger, transforming that into a five cost follower. Uh, it's pretty awesome. So like this, this has a, a pretty good uh comes to play like coming to play effect um <laughs> run it on nell deck then um uh, oh yeah powder keg yeah you can transform a powder keg yeah that's true powder kegs i didn't even think of powder kegs they are um allies that that are out there 
Yeah, you could do it on a, on a powder keg, maybe on something they made vulnerable. Like something your opponent made vulnerable. Um, but at the end of the day, you are getting a 4 mana 2-2. Two, two. That's pretty below the bar for 4 mana. Like, that's... So, like... Yeah, like, here, like that's pretty bad. But, um... You're spending 4 mana and getting a 5 cost follower. So, that's also good. Hopefully, the thing that you transform is less valuable than a 2-2, two -two, though. Hopefully. Because if it is less valuable than a 2-2, two -two, then you just spent 4 mana to get a random 5 cost follower. Right? Because then, and upgraded something else to be a 2-2. Two -two. You can kind of think of it like that. But if if the thing that you're making is more valuable than a 2-2, two -two, then this, this card's just not going to be very good. Wow, that is very haunting. Sorry, that flavor. Yeah, that flavor text is really haunting. I had to read it. That is. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't, like, kill an ally. You know, so you don't get all the, the kill bonuses. You know, like, it's... You're just transforming. So this is, does not work with Undying or um, uh, Cursed Keeper or anything like that. Like, you're not actually killing. So you, you don't get any... All those benefits from your units dying. It's just being transformed. All right, we talked about Playful Trickster. I like this card. Um, yeah, I like this card. We talked about that with, with Fizz, because this is Fizz's um, spell card, but we talked about it there. And Riptide, it's Nautilus's card. So we talked about talked about this with Nautilus. Also another very good card. Salvage. Four mana, burst speed, toss two, draw two. I am in there. We're playing um, our Maokai deck. And we need to toss some of our deck, even maybe maybe even a Nautilus, and trying to trying to get rid of some of our library to level up Nautilus. This gets rid of four cards from your library. You you toss two from the bottom and you draw two from the top. Four mana burst speed. I'm in there. I like it. Um, yeah, just excellent for a toss deck. Yep. Uh, I would assume Deep and Expedition is still 15 cards. Yeah, I would assume so, even though you start with just 30. Makes it easier. Yeah, Deep may be busted in Expedition. Especially how Expedition games play out, how they're like slower games. Deep really may be busted in Expedition. Yeah, it starts at 30 and go yeah, it goes up to 36. Could be. All right, um, our our next card, um, we got the Beast Below. So this is our, our first sea monster to see from Bilgewater. There's a sea monster that we, we saw earlier in Shadow Isles. So four mana, four, four, that has deep. So remember, deep means if you have 15 or less cards in your library, then it, it gets plus three, plus three. So this turns into a seven, seven, if you have um 15 or less cards this is still just a pretty decent body you know like if we're playing uh the the three mana card i should go learn the name we're, we're about to play we're probably gonna go hit a bunch of sea monsters so let's go learn this card's name again real quick lure of the depths this is one that we, we spent a good amount of time on earlier so if we're if we're playing our lure of the depths to reduce the cost of sea monsters allies everywhere by one um you know like we're we're probably just in the market for playing as many different sea monsters as we can and this this fits right there this doesn't help um this is basically just a payoff kind of card this doesn't help enable any strategies like it doesn't help enable you to get deep you're not tossing any cards or drawing any cards you're not getting rid of anything from your deck so this is just kind of a payoff it's also just a good um, bridge at four mana originally or um, you know three mana after a lure of the depths it's just a good bridge between like lure of the depths and your other big sea monsters and other big effects um, again lure of the depths you can play on turn two like if you play nothing on turn one bank your spell mana um, and then turn two with 
with your three total spell mana, you play Lure, and then turn three, now this Beast Below only costs three. So you can play this on turn three as a 4-4. Four, four. Yep. As we know with like Loyal Badger Bear, there's nothing wrong with three mana 4-4. Four, four. So I think you're just in, I think you're just priced into playing all of these. So Besides Sea Monster decks, I'm not sure how much we're really playing this card. You know, even if, like if you think about like a Maokai deck, are we throwing this in there? Maybe. It depends on the curve. It depends on like the four mana slot and the curve and, and like your removal and everything else, if this fits. But your Sea Monster deck, yeah, we're throwing it in there. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, it definitely works with Nautilus return, you know, gets back in your deck for Nautilus. All right, we talked about Twisted Fate. Um, Yordle... Gr Grifter. Yordle Grifter. So that's a Yordle. Four mana, three, three. A little bit below curve on body, but it's fine. When I'm summoned, create a warning shot in hand. All right, so summon trigger. Um, we already get to create something. Um, and it's summon, not play. So, you know, anything that, that brings it in. Like Chronicler of Ruin. Any You know, anything that brings it in, we get to trigger it. And then Allegiance. Draw one from the enemy deck. All right, so if you play this and you're a, a Bilgewater, you know, the Allegiance deck, and you hit the Allegiance trigger, you not only create a warning shot in hand, but you also draw one from the enemy deck. And that's something we've talked about how good that is. So you're netting, you're getting two cards. You're getting a draw two with a 3-3 three, three body. That is awesome. All right, so what's our warning shot? So our warning shot is, you know, remember this thing that's just zero mana, deal one to the enemy nexus. You know, like, so if we're playing a Legion's deck, we probably want to be playing um, the, uh, it's not fleeting, right? Okay, yeah, good. The warning shot's not fleeting, so we can, we can have this anyway. You know, we're probably playing some plunder stuff, and so, you know, like, this warning shot helps with the plunder. You know, maybe we're playing Gangplank, things like this. Um... Yeah, this, this seems like a great card to to uh, clone, though. Um, you know, Chronicler of Ruins or um, any you know anything like that. Like Mist Call, bring it back. Um, you know, all the clone stuff with PNZ. Now, you have to hit Allegiance each time. So I don't know exactly how we're doing it because, you know, we, we can't really use the other regions that much because we're trying to hit Allegiance. But if we can figure out a way to start cloning this, like, this is awesome. The draw one from the enemy deck is really good. Um, yeah, Allegiance also triggers on Summon. Um, so yeah, we can just keep cloning this, but this card's really good. This is definitely one of the better Allegiance cards. Yeah, like, this is one of the better ones. Um, it's not, it's not maybe, like, the very best, like, like, a Bannerman's still probably better. This is definitely one of the best Allegiance cards. And I do like that the warning shot is not, um, it's not fleeting. You don't have to just throw, you know, play this and then throw out the warning shot. You can, um, you can cast the warning shot when you, when you need to, to, to trigger plunder or on like a turn that you weren't going to be able to do damage anyway, to be able to trigger your gangplank or Sawani. Really good card here, this Yordle Grifter. Zap, sp Zap, Zap. Sprayfin. Another very good card. This card's epic. Cute little art. I like this art. Anyway, a 4 mana 2-2 two, two elusive. And also a tune. So it does um, you know, give you one spell mana back. So if you're playing spells and you can use that spell mana, you know, you it does make it essentially costs less than four but four mana two two elusive that body is not very much you know you can think of like kinku lifeblade as like a four mana two two elusive um without any kind of pump the kinku lifeblade doesn't do a whole lot this you know like it's it's you know it's a small body but what you get is you get the extra spell man with a tune and you get this awesome summon trigger when i'm summoned you draw a spell that costs three or less from your deck so again you have to have uh, it's drawing from your deck, so you have to have a deck. You have to have a spell that does cost three or less in your deck to be able to draw it. But uh, 
I'm assuming you're playing some spells that cost three or less because basically everybody does. So there's multiple ways to do this. You can just have this as like a value card where you're playing like a control deck. Like this is great in a control deck that's using removal and everything. Like maybe you're playing PNZ and you got Thermogenic Beam and Mystic Shot and get excited and you're just gonna be getting one of those uh, each time you play this Zap Sprayfin. Uh, maybe you're playing, you know, so you're not playing Ionia if you're playing this with PNZ. So this is basically like your uh, Shadow Assassin. It costs an extra mana than Shadow Assassin, but it also attunes one. And you have a more, um, a more specific knowledge of what you're drawing. That's one thing. But then another thing you can do with this is just make it a tutor. Like this can just be, um, like if, you know, it, it will put like the deck building restrictions on you. But if you play a singular spell that cost three or less in your deck, then whenever you play this, the spray fin, you're always drawing that spell. So if we're thinking about like, what could be like something that you really want to draw that costs three or less? Well, maybe you are playing some sea monsters and you really want Lure of the Depths because Lure of the Depths reduces the cost of your sea monster allies everywhere and draws you a sea monster. So if you can build a sea monster deck where you don't have other spells that cost three or less besides Lure of the Depths, you can also just put this elusive unit in there and always draw Lure of the Depths. You can make it a, a tutor for that. You know, same thing with like Poro Snacks. Um, if, you know, in your Poro deck, you can just make sure to go grab por uh, Poro Snacks. Um, that other uh, three mana card uh double trouble i think it was double trouble uh that the three mana gets to one cost minions like put two one cost minions into play if you're playing you know a uh, professor van von yip deck those are some more janky things to do um entreat you can make this like draw a champion if you if you have just like entreat is your only spell that costs three or less and then you're just playing one champion so then the entreat draws the champion that's pretty janky too. Um, you know, those are just some some things that that you can do. Am I live? My chat is like looking weird right now. Am I live? Can y'all y'all hear? I have like a my screen's kind of looking weird. Okay, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, so there's. Uh, those are like some different things that we could be doing with Zap Sprayfin. Um, but then also just using this as a value card and just, you know, always drawing a spell. Maybe there's just a couple of spells that you really want to draw. It's a good card. And, you know, you, of course you get to attune and get that one mana back. Yeah. Good card. All right. More sea monsters. Abyssal Eye. Five mana, three, three. It has elusive and it's deep. Nexus Strike, draw a card. I like this one. So the deep isn't going to matter till later in the game, right? Like you have to have your 15 or less cards in your library. And if you do, then this will be a 6-6 six, six elusive, which is huge for five mana. But even even five mana, three, three elusive Nexus Strike, draw a card, even like just ignoring the keyword deep on here, this is still playable, especially when you talk about Lure of the Depths. If you have Lure the Depths on turn two or turn three, then this thing costs four. And if, and if you think of it like that, if you think of this as like a four drop, a four mana three, three elusive, that's a pretty good size elusive. And then, you know, if they can't kill it, Nexus Strike, draw a card. That's pretty nice. So really thinking of this as like a four drop because of Lure the Depths uh, really makes this card a lot better. And I like it. I like it. It's even something you can play later on in the game, you know, after even a couple lure the depths, maybe you're, you're deep. Um, you know, this is, we're just playing this in the sea monster deck. Definitely neat. Yeah. The draw helps. That's a good, good point that drawing cards help you get deep. Um, that sounds weird. Help, help, helps you get deep. That sounds weird, but you know, that's what it does. 
Um, yeah, we're going to be playing this in our Sea Monster decks. When we saw Sea Monsters yesterday, they didn't have a space between the Sea and the Monster. I guess that must be something that already changed. Alright, we've talked about Gangplank. Hunting Fleet. 5 mana, 7-7. Seven, seven. When I'm summoned, summon a Golden Narwhale for your opponent. So we saw this card. So this is a 2-4 um, that is vulnerable and elusive. So basically, you play Hunting Fleet for 5 mana. You give them the Narwhale. You attack with your Hunting Fleet. And you hunt down the Narwhale. And now you have a 7-5. So you have a 5 mana 7-5. It's honestly, that's fine, but that's not so special. Um, yeah, you play on your opponent's full board. There you go. That's fine, but that's nothing special. It's also, it's a 5 mana 7 5 that doesn't attack the, the turn you play it, right? Because the turn you play it, you have to attack this Golden Narwhale. And then it just has like huge downsides. It's a 5 it, you know, it's a 7 5 that if they kill it before. You can kill the narwhale. Maybe they just get they just get the free narwhale. This just isn't this just isn't anything I'm really interested in playing at all. Um, yeah, there is an update with the space, but not like cards that are created. Like if if you have six cards and then a new card's created, it, it still gets obliterated. The update is if you have six cards and then if you want to cast a new ally then you can do that and you can choose one of your six to obliterate. That's that's the update there. But I'm not I'm not interested in that card at all. I, I don't think that card's very good. Alright, five mana four four with scout and whenever you play you grant an enemy vulnerable. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. We get we get some more scout. That's pretty good. And this is a pretty good sized body for a scout um ally the a lot of the scout allies that we've seen have been you know under under the curve which this is like four four for five like you really want more like five five for five but this is you know this is doable um but the whole play grant an enemy vulnerable that's really nice um i guess this is kind of like silver wing lancer right like five mana five four challenger this has like some upsides and some downsides to Silverwing Lancer. Obviously, one great thing about Silverwing Lancer is the last breath trigger, where you get to create an elite in hand. That is great. Um, but besides that, this granting an enemy vulnerable means means that you don't have to challenge the enemy with the hunter. You can, you know, you give something else. You give one of their enemies vulnerable, and then you can have any of your creatures then target and fight that thing like maybe they have something that's like a a five one because it took damage somewhere else and instead of having to have your four four challenge it you can have like your two two go and and challenge it because it's vulnerable like so that that's that's really nice and then of course the whole scout part where you get to attack with this first and then get another attack for the different cards like um misfortune and quinn and things like that so yeah, so there's definitely some upsides. Um, that is true. So we grant one enemy vulnerable, and you know, like like we did, and then we just killed it with our tutu. But now they don't have any enemies that have vulnerable anymore, and now we just have a vanilla four four. Well, a four four with scout. It's not like the um, the silver wing can challenge kill something then can challenge again and kill you know kill something else we don't get to do that i think the silver wing's probably a better card but they're close and different regions you know this this region doesn't have access to silver wing um so you know if you're not playing demacia gives you some some help but you know if, if you want some scout if you want for like um you know misfortune and other things like that this can this can be a good card. This this does seem like a good card with Misfortune. You know, Misfortune needs to see you attack with what four times I think, and you can play Hunter, make a small creature vulnerable, 
challenge it with the hunter that's one attack through misfortune then go to like a normal attack that's another attack each time you're triggering misfortune i like it i like it yeah slippery wave rider oh i think of cute five mana four four elusive with a tune that's a pretty big elusive that's a pretty big elusive. It's not doing anything else. But still, just getting a 4-4 elusive body for 5. That's that's not bad. And then, you know, of course, you have the attune also. That just makes it even better. This is a good filler. Like, this may not make the cut in some kind of deck. You know, like, whatever elusive deck or just in anything. But this is a good filler card. This is a really good expedition card. That card's going to be really good in Expedition. It's a common. Yeah, that card's very good in Expedition. Oh, if that last card's trigger was for attack and not play, yeah, for the vulnerable, yeah, that, yeah, that would be amazing. All right, Citrus Courier. I just like this card because I like oranges. I like oranges. I like citrus. Citrus. Citrus is a fun word to say also. Citrus. I I support citrus. And so we have a courier carrying carrying around some citrus. I support that. But besides that, it's a pretty good card too. So I'll support that too. It's a six mana, four, five. Um, if you do not plunder, that's pretty bad. Right, like you're just gonna have a six mana four five. Like, it, like if your opponents like killed all your creatures and you don't get to do any damage to them and you don't have any spells to do damage and you're just sitting here looking at your six mana four five, you're gonna be sad. But if you are winning and you have a big board and you have a whole bunch of stuff that you just attacked with, um, and you know something dealt damage to your opponent and then you're like, boom, citrus courier plunder heal all of your allies and your nexus three and then rally that is awesome that that's going to finish out games you know so this is the top this is definitely the top end of an aggro deck right you, you want to be real aggressive and uh you know closing out games with your citrus courier that's that's definitely what you want here um real good with you know like some quick attack champions that are hard to trade with like where you can rally and, and attack again with them um, also, real good with uh, Vladimir. This is a great Vladimir card. You know, heal like all those those things that Vladimir just dealt one damage to. Heal them all up three, and then rally. Yeah, this is really good with Vladimir. That's cool. I like I like Vladimir getting some more support. And then yeah, and then all the things that that you need more attacks with. You know, like you could have. Oh, you know you you attack with your. Um, with your scout, the hunter, you you know you play a ra razor scale hunter, you attack, and then you just normally attack, and then you play your citrus courier and heal your hunter and heal other things, and then you get to attack again. You just like attack a million times. Um, yeah, you can heal the monkey thing. <laughs> Is the monkey thing? Oh, I think it's. Oh yeah, because it's heal all your allies. Yeah, it's true. You can heal that that O four monkey. Thing, that monkey idol it doesn't have to attack because the monkey idol is um you know it can't attack or block but yeah you can heal that i like it Ooh, more sea monsters sea monsters devourer of the depths awesome name it's a six mana four four that is also deep six mana four four below the curve um not yeah don't love six mana four four if we're deep we're talking about six mana seven seven okay okay if we've cast lure the depths um to lure our devourer and now we're talking about like a five mana four four okay now now we're doing now we're doing a little bit better at five mana. i like this at five mana more but play obliterate an enemy with less health than me question is is this the first obliterate removal spell no, there is She Who Wanders. Yeah, She Who Wanders obliterates a bunch of stuff. I guess this is probably the second. All right, so the enemy has to have less health than 
Land Devourer. And you know, it is a skill that goes on the stack, so they get to respond. So you could target like a Karma, that's a 4-3, and try to obliterate the Karma, but then they just play, you know, Mystic Shot, and then turn your thing into a 4-2, and now the Karma is a 4-3, and then this doesn't work anymore. That'd be sad. Devour. How? Um, but yeah, like being able to hit champions, of course, is really important. Um, obliterating champions sounds like a, a great thing to do. If you obliterate a champion, a rekindler doesn't bring it back, right? Like, let's say, let's say they play karma on five. They play no previous champions. They play karma on five. On turn six, you devour it. And then on turn seven, they rekindler. It doesn't bring it back, right? Yeah, because it doesn't... Okay, correct. Yeah, it doesn't die. Because it got obliterated. Because it got obliterated. Hey. Um, so yeah, I like it, you know? Let's throw it in our sea monster deck. Why not? Let's do it. Let's obliterate some stuff. All right, double up. Six mana, fast speed, deal two to an enemy unit. If this kills it, deal four to the enemy nexus. Okay, so this doubles up one of the spells that we played earlier, right? That there was a spell earlier, was it was a three mana thing that dealt one to an enemy unit. If it kills it, do two to the nexus? No, it had to have been deal two to an enemy unit, and then if it kills it, do one to the enemy nexus, right? Yeah, yeah, the obvious thing here is Powder Keg. Yeah, Powder Keg with that. Start pumping that up. What was that card earlier? Parlay. Deal one. If it kills it, do one. It's only one and one for one. But that's the same template. The same writing. Yeah, I was, I was thinking like Make It Rain. That's what I was kind of thinking of, I think. Yeah, so I guess it's the same template as as uh, Parlay. Oh, dang. Whoa. All right. Which is deal one. If it kills it, do one. But you add an additional five mana, and you only do one additional damage. Yeah, it is fast speed. So, yeah, you can do stuff... Um, with misfortune during the attack phase, that's true. Um, still at six mana, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're probably fitting this into our decks. I think that out of all the the good cards that we can possibly play, we're we're probably finding some better things to play than double up. Unfortunately, so sorry, misfortune. Sorry, we'll probably find some better stuff for you. I guess that's true if you compare it to Decimate. I'm thinking of it as the two damage to the enemy unit being the valuable thing, but if you think about it compared to Decimate where the four damage to the enemy nexus is the valuable thing. You could probably find a little bit more use for it. Because that can actually kill something, you know, that should kill something also and decimate for one extra mana. You get the shock effect. It's just not reliable because that shock effect has to kill something. Um. All right, another six mana card. Sheriff Lorette Rose. Probably Lorette. Larietta? Maybe Larietta. I don't know. Sheriff Rose... Six mana, six five. Perfectly reasonable. When I'm summoned, grant all enemies vulnerable. Yes. Remember that's that's granting them permanently, so they all all the enemies are permanently vulnerable. That's what I'm talking about. Um Definitely a mid-range card. The citrus courier we just we just uh talked about is more of like the top end of the aggro deck. You don't really play this as like the top end of an aggro deck. You get that search, that Citrus Courier. So this is more of like your um, mid-range deck that's playing beefy units. 
um, that's trying to outgrind the opponent, which is my kind of my kind of deck. So this is my kind of card. Um, yeah, I get to hunt all sorts of stuff with the sheriff. I'll just be really sad if my opponent mystic shots my sheriff, which they probably will. I don't know, it doesn't even kill it. I don't know. I was I was looking for a I shot the sheriff joke. But I couldn't find it. Anyway, good card. I like that one. Alright, six mana, strong arm, plunder, place a follower in play into your hand. <clears throat> Alright, so you don't get to just play this at any time. You have to have plunder to be able to play this card. So that makes it kind of difficult. You can't just do this pre-combat. You have to do this like after combat or after they took damage from something else. Basically what this means is, so you can't target champions, okay? But you basically, what you do is you take another, you take a follower that your opponent has in play and you just put it into your hand. So you bounce any of your, your opponent's followers to your hand. So if you think about like Will of Ionia bouncing it to their hand for four mana, six mana you bounce it to your hand. <laughs> so it's so it's kind of like possession. Possession's at five mana, um, and you don't have to have the plunder thing. But this is permanent and it's six mana. Um, yeah, you can use it on an enemy. So yeah, it's a follower in play. Yeah, so your enemy's followers. So it can't be a champion. This will be kind of fun to do. Like, it'll be fun fun to play this. I'm not sure how good it will be. It's it's a worse Vengeance. Vengeance is gonna be, Vengeance is better than this card. Vengeance is just much more versatile. Vengeance kills champions. Killing Like, you gotta be able to kill champions. Champions are, like, the most important thing to kill. And it's fast speed. This is slow speed, and it you can only play this after you plunder and slow speed. This will be tough. Um... Yeah, I do like that the Pirate Region has the Steal Your Deck archetype. I do like that, too. Okay, what about... All right, so you, we're, we're late game, okay? We're late game. We attack. Uh, opponent doesn't block. We do damage. All right, plunder. It's turn nine. Tell me how many times you've had this scenario. You, like, attack with something. You do a little bit of damage. Turn nine. Opponent's priority now. They play... Commander Ledros, because they're playing Karina Control. Half your life is gone, and now you're like, man, I can never kill that that Commander Ledros, and they're gonna like atrocity it, and you know, like that thing's just gonna kill me. Well, now you just strong arm that Commander Ledros. Take that back. I'll I'll take that. Thank you. That follower is now mine. That's the strong arm play right there. That is the dream for strong arm. Most of the time, we're just gonna be looking at like a bunch of spiderlings that are killing you, and you're like, "What am I doing with this strong arm in my in my deck? Like, what am I even doing?" But that one time to get that Ledros, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they glimpse it in response. Till, all right. So I don't think we're actually really putting this in decks. I don't think this is gonna really work, but. If this was anything, you know, like, if you could take champions, you know, now we're talking. But just followers, I, I don't I don't think so. Nautilus. Nautilus is sweet. All right, scrap shot, fast. Toss three, deal seven to a unit for seven mana. So we're vengeance. You know, this is like vengeance, CMC. Seven mana, fast, speed. You know, same kind of thing, but instead of destroying a unit, we're doing seven to it. That's a pretty big downgrade. Destroying the unit's much, much better. Um, now, obviously, you don't always get to play Vengeance when you play this card. And this has, like, the toss synergies, right? So, like, you have, um, you know, you have you you want to put this in, in your toss decks, in your Maokai, which would have Shadow Isles, which would have Vengeance. And your sea monster decks, probably. Or your Nautilus deck. Deal seven to a unit. Uh, 
I just, I just don't like that. That's going to kill a lot of things, but I just don't want... You know, I don't want to like play this and then they play prismatic barrier and just give their thing a barrier and then I'm like, come on. Or, you know, or just like a twin disciplines that saves it. You know, I, I want my vengeance kill, you know, like I want my seven mana removal spell killing their thing. I don't want them just to barrier it up. Yuck. Yuck. But, you know, it has that toss three upside. I wish this was, this was deal two to a unit and then do five to a unit. You know, I, like do five to the same unit. I don't know. Some way to get around barrier. I hate that that barrier is just like a, a hard, hard counter to my seven mana removal spell. I don't like it. For, for like... That's a premium cost. And if we're playing if we're paying a premium cost, I want a premium effect. And we're not getting a premium effect for a premium cost. <laughs> yeah, deal yeah, seven seven one one damage pings. Cause like powder keg. Yeah, just <laughs> So basically, I think I would rather play Vengeance most of the time, but if we need the Toss card, um, and if, if barriers kind of go down in, in play, you know, like if people aren't playing very many barriers, that makes this go up. But if, like if we need the Toss card, maybe we play this instead. But if we're going to have like one or two seven mana removal spells, I kind of want the Vengeance. All right, I, I love this card. All right, here's another sea monster, Shipwreck Hoarder. Seven mana, seven five. This is definitely a big payoff for playing a sea monster deck. It is also deep when I'm summoned. So it is a summon trigger. Toss two and shuffle two treasures into your deck. All right, so we get to toss two, which is important. These sea monsters haven't really had very much tossing. So it has kind of made it seem like it may be difficult to get our library down to 15. Um... 15 or less cards for our Nautiluses is, you know, it, ha it has kind of made, give, given uh, me that impression. But, you know, we have our, so we have our shipwreck order. Uh, so we get to toss two, but then we shuffle two treasures into the deck. All right, so these treasures, there are three of them. And these just get shuffled into the deck. So we don't draw them, but these will just be in our deck. So, <clears throat> so that doesn't even seem that great. Like we're not even getting card advantage, but these treasures are really, really powerful cards. Five mana, slow speed, deal five to all units. That's really good. You know, like we're getting a, a great, you know, like one more than Avalanche, but we're doing five to everything. So like we got a sweeper here. Um, and if it's, if it gets tossed later on after we shuffle it, then we get to draw it. So, um, and that's that's true with all these these treasures. If it's tossed, draw me instead. So it's even better than just shuffling them into our deck. Because normally you would think, well, wait, wait, I need my we're, we're we're going deep here with our Nautilus. If we're going deep, we need our library to have 15 or less cards. So why am I shuffling treasures into the deck? Because then that doesn't even you know, like we're putting more more cards into our deck. Like that's that's not what we want. We want less cards in our deck. But these cards are just so valuable. So of course there's the Keel Breaker, Plate, plate Worm Egg, which is awesome. Five mana, you get three Vicious Plate Worms. So the Vicious Plate Worms are five fives. Um, are they here? There we go. They're five fives that have Deep and Fearsome. Those things are awesome. So you get three of those for five mana. I love me some Plate Worm Egg, that card's great. And then there's also Treasure Tove. Uh, create five random cards in hand. They cost zero and are fleeting. So you just get, um, you get to just play five random cards. This one's my favorite, getting three five fives. But yeah, these treasures are awesome. So I'm a big fan of the shipwreck order. Um, just a really cool design. This is just a fun card to play. Um, competitively. It, we are talking about a seven mana card that's just a seven five that doesn't actually affect the battlefield um, with any kind of enter the battlefield effect. You know, like we're just putting 
we're just shuffling treasures into our deck or tossing two. Like, none of that actually affects anything besides just putting a 7-5 into play. And at 7 mana, we probably need to be doing something better than that. But whenever you kind of combine this with our sea monster synergies, if we can make this cost less, um, you know, and if we can have the game go long enough and start drawing these treasures, there is a, a pretty big payoff eventually. It's just, will we be able to stay alive and make the game go that long and really see that payoff? I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> All right, Smooth Soloist. Seven mana, three, four, elusive. Plunder, reduce the cost of allies in your hand and deck by two. This is just another card that I love. But again, I don't know like how good it actually is competitively by so i say that statement i don't know how good it is competitively when you hear that you should when you hear me say that you can translate that to this card is not very good competitively or this card is mediocre competitively i guess you you know it's something like that that's the the, the translate but basically, this card's really, really cool, really fun. Um, something I, I really like, I really like to play. But as far as, like, if my goal is to get number one in the ranking, this is not, unfortunately, this is not really where I want to play. Want, that's really not what we want to be. <laughs> that, that's what you heard the first time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are talking about a seven mana, three, four. It is elusive, which is nice, but... Because by the time you're playing a seven mana card, and you have plunder, you have to have plunder turned on. And so by the time you have seven mana, seven mana card, and you're plundering, the game's like pretty over, or it's in hand one way or the other. That's not really where, at that point of the game, then you have a reduction of cost of other allies in your hand in your deck. Like, what's really going to be the impact of that reduction of cost? Like, how much longer is this game going? realistically where and how much does your three mana card now costing one mana or your six mana card now cost four mana like how much is that really a benefit at this point in in time like in this this juncture of the game honestly probably not very much but that doesn't mean that you can't make a smooth soloist and play it and have some fun with it and do some cool things with it that's what i'm gonna do but and you know we'll win some games with it but um you know this is not going to be a tier one card uh, yeah there's people in chat are saying like von yip with a bunch of three drops okay okay because your your three drops will now be one drops so it'll be one mana card so they'll get plus two plus two with your von yip i like it Certainly need a, a good amount of card draw. You know, maybe that's like Trifarian Assessor. Or something. You need you need some card draw to be able to get more allies. But really like the card. But uh, unfortunately not the best competitively. The Siren. I've not seen this one. Never mind, yeah, I have. All right, so seven mana, three, seven. This is the um, the champion draw spell for uh, Bilgewater. We're drawing a Misfortune. That's cool. So, you know, you already have that part, and it is a scout. So, you know, they show you the synergies with Misfortune because it is a scout, and it's a really hard card to kill um, by just blocking it. So, you know, you can kind of freely attack with your three, seven and then get to an attack again. Like that extra toughness really helps you attack twice. Um, while I'm attacking all of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. So again, uh, if you, if you have this and misfortune in play, you attack, then your misfortune does two to the battling enemies in the enemy nexus. And then you get to attack again because of scout. And again, you do two. Again, really good synergies, but it just seems like these cards are overcosted. Seven mana here. We are, we are drawing a card. 
Kind of like comparing these to Rekindler. You know, like Rekindler, seven mana, you get the four four. You bring it, you bring something back, and it's into play. It's a lot better than drawing. Um, but re you have to already have drawn the the champion. The champion has to die before you rekindle her. This just um, tutors for it, puts you puts it into your hand, and then also has other abilities. That's true. If your if your misfortune is leveled up by that point. Um, yeah, Misfortune would... Yeah, it's it's uh, um, six damage to all enemies. Because, yeah, isn't, isn't the Misfortune... It's, what, three damage? It's deal one three times the level up. It's now we're doing two damage three times. That's a lot. And it's, it's better that's the two damage three times because if somebody wants to use, like, a barrier to protect, it's not, you know, like, they don't... The first one kills the barrier. It is worse against tough. It does seem like the keyword tough is going to be more valuable. May have to start playing some chain fests. Yeah, it is only the battling enemies. That's true. That's why you gotta get some vulnerable up in here. Or some challenger. Yeah, then the scout attacking twice. Doing 12. Like your opponent's just gotta be dead at that point, right? <laughs> 12 to their nexus. They gotta just be dead. Mind meld. 8 mana slow speed spell. This round set all allies power and health to the number of spells you've played this game. Alright, well we got another meme tier Monday card. I don't think this is anything we'll ever play. I don't think like you'd ever play this like regularly. Eight mana spell. So like, let's say you've you've cast you know ten spells. So then your allies' power and power and health. They'll all be ten tens this round, and then they'll just like chump block them with some one ones. And you just spend an eight mana spell. I don't know. I guess they had a chump block. Um. I mean, I'd rather have like what like wouldn't you rather just play pack mentality for one mana cheaper because you get overwhelm like plus two plus two and overwhelm. I think the Overwhelm is probably more valuable than just setting their power and health. You can use this, I guess you can kind of use this as a heal effect, but but also Pack Mentality doesn't have any, doesn't have any other like requirements. Like So for Mind Meld to work, you A, have to have a pretty full board and B, you have to have played a bunch of spells this game so not even just like three spells, because then they're just turning to three threes. You have to play a lot, like just an abundance of spells already this game. And then C, you have to be able to play this like before combat as a slow spell, and then let your opponent do stuff and hope they don't, you know, ruination or, you know, whatever. Um, and then after that, then, then you get the payoff. With Scout, maybe? Nah. 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 Meme, meme tier Monday. Meme tier Monday. Riptide Rex. What you doing, Riptide Rex? 8 mana, 7, 4. I like Rex. Rex looks pretty cool. It's just like this shark with a bunch of cannons. Dude, Rex is just... Man, Rex is just hanging out. He's, he's having a good time. I like Rex. All right, Riptide Rex, um, Plunder. So again, you know, got to trigger Plunder. Uh, how to improve a shark. Give it cannons. <laughs> yeah, it's not a sea monster because this is a land shark. So not a sea monster. But anyway, Plunder, you cannon barrage seven times on random enemies. So cannon barrage is deal two to a unit if it's dead or gone deal one to the enemy nexus instead so we're doing that seven times i assume i assume this is like one skill in the middle that says cannon barrage seven times do you think this just pulls up seven cannon barrage skills Maybe it is just the seven cannon barrage skills. Like, a, like you know, if you think about, like, the, the battlefield, does this just, like, how does this, this going to work? So, you, 
you play this and then it just has the seven cannon barrage skills so they can't just like deny right like because they just deny this you know they can just deny it altogether or is it just gonna be like the seven of these like where they could deny it in one but they can't deny like all of them yes yeah, so it's probably seven so powder kegs only helps the first one so yeah it doesn't work that well with powder keg but it does mean that each one is like random, like where it is basically a board clear, right? Cause like one happens, cause they don't, they won't all target right away then if they're, if it's all separate, right? Or will they target? Oh, uh, cause so basically I think it's like a, a, a uh, I think it's basically a board clear. Right, like if it's, uh, I mean, it does say if it's dead or gone, do one to the enemy nexus instead, though. Because, you know, like, we want it to be doing two to the, the units. We don't really want it to be doing the one to the nexus as much. Yeah, I kind of feel like it's one at a time. I don't know, but it does say if it's dead or gone, do one to the nexus instead. So maybe it does all seven of them, you know, like... Four of them target this 1-1, one, one. three of them target this 2-2, two, two, and none target the 3-3 three, three, or the 4-4. Four, four. Maybe it's like that. Or maybe it's, you know, they have the 1-1, one, one, the 2-2, two, two, the 3-3, three, three, the 4-4. Four, four. One cannon barrage hits, it does, kills the 2-2. Two, two. And now they have the other three. Now the next one finds a target. Maybe it's that. Yeah, plunder means that you have dealt damage to your opponent. So you, you have to have already dealt damage to your opponent this round, maybe by attacking or by a spell, and then like basically probably by attacking, and then post-combat you play this Riptide Rex, and then you get this trigger. Uh... I don't know what happened, Marpoletti. I don't know what happened. Anyway, um, yeah. Anyway, back to this card. Um, this seems like uh, it seems like it's a pretty decent card, and we'll have to kind of really um, figure out like what you know what exactly happens with this candid barrage. But it can it can be really really powerful. Um, you know, it's kind of like kind of like Karina, right? Like Karina, like nine mana. You play it to clear the board and do damage to the opponent. It's kind of like that. Like, where it can do a lot of damage to different units and, and then also deal damage to them. It's kind of like that. Um, but. Anyway, yeah, this looks pretty good. I mean, I think this is, you know, kind of similar to Karina Veraza. And so we'll we'll kind of see what, what um, you know, how, like, what we're... You know what will really happen with that card <laughs> shark cannon too strong um oh uh, okay okay i i i see you mark play yeah i, I got gotcha. you i figured it out yeah that's yeah that's what happened Anyway, um, here's the Dreadway. Um, nine mana, four, eight. Whenever you play it, you get to draw Gangplank. So, Bilgewater... Bilgewater gets two of these champion cards. That's really powerful. Definitely, you know, powerful during Expeditions, as we've talked about. I think these cards are really good in Expedition, where the games are longer, they're slower. 
grindier, you have time to you know drop your nine drop and go tutor up your gangplank. Um, you know, definitely good there. In the expeditions. Um, as far as in constructed, we're spending nine mana for a four eight doubles all damage dealt by allies. So this is really attacking for eight. And everything everything else you have attacks double damage. It's powerful, but we are talking about nine mana. Um, I don't know. It is pretty powerful, but I, this is like maybe a one of probably for like a gangplank deck. Uh, I assume like a leveled up gangplank does has the skill to do one damage. It has like the Anivia trigger, do one damage to the Nexus and all the opponent stuff. Um, and it's yeah, it's basically Torbrand, but Torbrand just for your allies, so not like your spells. So I'm I'm not sure if like that ally skill would be damaged probably or would be doubled probably not but it is an ally skill so I'm not sure um, it does double the skill damage too okay pirate says it does double the the skill damage too okay so that's good but again we're at nine mana so basically you have to be playing a gang plank deck that wants to play a late game you know you have to be playing one that has good early defense. Probably has some card advantage to be able to take over late games. Um, you know, like, because the nine drops that see play right now, Karina Veraza, Commander Ledros, those are in, like, a control deck um, that does have a good early game with the spiders. You know, so you can maybe have, like, a decent early game with a gangplank, maybe, and kind of get some chip shots in. But, you know, it has, like, card advantage and it has, like, ways to, to really take over the game later on. And I'm not sure if Dreadway um, kind of gets us there. Um, yeah, I think Gangplank plus Swain. Yeah, I think you can do some stuff there. But I'm, I'm not sold on this Dreadway. I think I'm kind of thinking it's too much for Constructed, but probably really good in, um, in Limited. For Expeditions. Is that the last one? Let's go down here. There wasn't a right arrow anymore. Yeah, that was the last one. The Dreadway. Dude, these ships are cool. Was this other 7 mana one a ship also? Yeah, it is. The Siren. Dude, I like these ships. The warships. The Leviathan's my favorite. Leviathan is sweet. Yeah, the pirate boats are the tutors. But all the... Yeah, the... Leviathan's my favorite one. For these boats. <laughs> we need a boat deck. Dude, I mean, we have the hype boats. Whenever we have somebody sub and everything. We do have hype boats instead of hype trains, because boats are cooler than trains. That is true. Um, all right, but there we go. That's the end of our review. We got through all of the Bilgewater cards. So we've done um, <laughs> Dreadway, then Ledros next turn for one one shot kill. Does that is that work? Because it doubles it. Because it dealt. Does that work? You know, Ledros does half round it up. If we double the skill, double half is whole. I mean, I guess it would work. Dreadway Ledros. Yeah, so if it does double the skill, it, it would. All right, I guess, guess we're going to have to make a Dread, Dreadway Ledros one turn kill deck. Yeah. We're going to have to do that. That's a good good call there, Nam. Ghost Pirates. That's pretty sweet. Anyway, yeah, so that's our um, complete set review for the Rising Tides. For those of y'all here in Twitch, if you missed any of it, if like you know, if you're just kind of coming in here in the last half hour or so, um, you missed any of the, the stuff, check it out over there on YouTube. I put the link there, youtube.com slash hawktie. Uh, we went through every single card here with Rising Tides, all 120 plus. Went through them all. Um you know, a good long stream day. We've been streaming for um, about about seven hours it took. But, of course, we had Twitch died there for a little bit in between. But um, good time. Tomorrow, I'll be on at uh, 4 o'clock Eastern, normal time. We'll be on. We'll be playing new decks. Honestly, maybe, maybe I should join an hour early at 3 o'clock Eastern and then build decks with y'all, maybe. If not, I, like, I'm going to be spending tomorrow building decks um, off stream, but maybe it'd be cooler to do that on stream. Maybe. 
I'm not sure. I don't know. But anyway, that's that's it here for uh, the second part of Bilgewater. Do you do you think I should join? Do you think I should go an hour early and build decks on stream first, Maximus? What do you think? Um, but yeah. Anyway, those of y'all watching on YouTube, okay, think so. All right, cool. Uh, hit that like button over there. Leave those comments. Let me know what cards do you want me to get right away. What what uh, champions do you want me to craft right away? What do you want? What kind of decks do you want me to build? Um, you know, which champions are you super excited about? You know, I'm listening to y'all. Which ones do you want to see? Um, first deck I want to try. Um, I don't have like one that like really, really jumps out at me. I do like sea monsters and stuff with Nautilus. We could do that, but I feel like that's maybe something that a lot of people do. I kind of want to play some Twisted Fate and just, uh, you know, like we're not going to level up Twisted Fate, but just play it as a value card. I do like Swain because I like Noxus and I think Noxus is like the worst region. And so I, I want to have Swain um, be, you know, I want to do some cool stuff with Swain, but I don't feel like Swain's the strongest. Um, so I think, I guess we'll just, yeah, Nautilus. I guess we'll just kind of figure that out tomorrow. All right, so tomorrow we'll start the stream early. So starting at an hour early. So three o'clock Eastern time, two o'clock my time. Um, we'll start the stream an hour early and we'll build some decks together and, uh, you know, whatever whatever y'all want in, in Twitch chat. Maokai, Maokai will be sweet. And then uh, um, <laughs> just play elusive Demacia Rally with, new, with no new cards. <laughs> that is... That is, uh, that's the mean thing to do. Just prey on all these people with their new decks that are all janky and everything with just a, a ruthless killer like that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's probably the best thing to do if you want to just rank up right immediately. All right, that's what we'll determine tomorrow. All right, but yeah, y'all on YouTube, let me know. Leave those comments. What do you want to see? All right, but anyway, thank you so much for watching our complete set review of The Rising Tides, the first expansion for Legends of Runeterra. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you for the next video.